Yes, yes. Welcome to the ancient world of tabletop games. I am Agamemnon from the historical documentary Time Bandits. This is a report from a fugitive. Let's see. Uh, we have won. We have defeated the creature. Yeah. So um, d- can we go check out the guardhouse? I'm kind of curious now. Maybe there's a clue in there or something. We're going to gain a clue just for fighting the creature. So that may alter the cards that we're looking at, I think. Oh, okay. We're going Do to- we have a clue already or this will be our first clue? Uh, let's see. What happened to our other clue? We had clue 28 or something. It's gone. Where'd that go? Did we have a clue? I'm a little forgetful due to the electrical, you know, I had this big, I told you the story, big electrical problems before we started. So I probably just forgot. Hmm. Oh, yes, of course. The clue is at the top of it because we turned it over. I thought that was the goal. It is. It's a clue on one side and a goal on the other. That was 27. We're getting 10. 26 is is the goal. Get into the house. Anyway, clue 10. That's a bit like to tell me that now after we've fought it with a knife. (laughs) But so what is clue 10? It's probably unwise to engage such a savage beast in combat. But danger is your middle name. It's a bit cheeky, isn't it? We need a name to go with that now. Oh, yeah. Names. Not very good with names. Studs O'Malley. Studs O'Malley. Okay. Studs Danger O'Malley. So that does few... sound very Raymond Chandler-esque. Hmm. I think we're definitely in the school of Mickey Mouse detection here. Anyway... You're armed with a knife. I would have said stabs, but apparently you box it. You land a few quick jabs on the creature before it can react, and then you throw it to the ground. You stand there for a moment, your confidence high. Then the creature leaps to its feet and rushes you. You manage to win round one, but you're in no hurry to start round two. So you race for the shadows beside a big boulder before the creature can get its hands on you. Okay. And that's going to take us to another clue. Clue 25 is a pair of High-powered binoculars. Mm-hmm. You find a pair of binoculars in the shadows. With so that goes of... into our inventory now? Yes, it does. It goes to our inventory, yes. With the creature on the loose, you can't hide here forever, so you run to the guardhouse. Keep this item. We're going to story card number 19. There we are. If there are any eyeball challenges, we can use the binoculars. And they'll give us okay. plus two. That's marvellous. And now we'll hunt nice. going for Dory card number 19. So we met a creature. We gave it a bit of a fight. Now we've run away around a bowler. You were lucky to escape the creature, but you know it's still out there somewhere. You run into the old guardhouse, which is a small room with several TV monitors flashing black and white images of various places on the estate grounds. Some monitors are broken, and shards of glass are scattered across a desk and the wood floors. A hefty book titled History of Northwin County is lying on the desk. Curiously, you look up the name Marsden Henry in the index. Sure enough, it references an entry on page 93. Your heart races as you turn there to read this bio. Henry Marsden, born 1839, died 1887, general in the Union Army during the Civil War, severely wounded at the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, Appointed warden of Hedgebrook Prison, 1880. Rumoured to have been killed in the prison riot fire of 1887, to which all mystery fans say, well, that's a likely story, isn't it? Not a popular guy, you think. The desk has three drawers. Maybe there's something useful inside. A wooden ladder leads up to a hatch in the roof. Through a window filled with cobwebs, you can see an open field that leads to the manor's front door. You consider what to do next. There is an optional challenge here, and it's blue. This is going to be very, very silly, isn't it? Optional challenge, search the desk drawers. Yeah, what's the downside to doing that? Raise the danger meter by one if we lose, and we'll gain a clue if we win. Did you want to? Well, I'm just saying the challenge is to search the desk drawers. And we have a handy eyeball piece of equipment that can help us to do that. We could search the desk drawers using the binoculars. Sure. Let's do it then. I'm not quite sure how we do that. You'd think the binoculars would help you search this field that's far away through the window. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. But the cheese is strong with this one. Well, let's calculate the danger, shall we? It's three. And if we use the binoculars plus two, we roll 
a, a minimum of two, then we've succeeded. If we roll a one, we lose automatically. Okay. If I misremember rightly, if we roll a one, I'm afraid this pair of binoculars will smash or fall away. It'll have to be discarded. So that's the risk, of course. Right. Shall we search the drawers? Sure. Will we use the binocular? Sure. Very cavalier about all this, you know. <laughs> there we are. I'm going to reset the crooked die in the dice tower. Right, here we go. We're successful unless we roll a one. All right. Come on, no one, no one. It's a Yay, three. three. Very exciting. How's that? How's that for energy? Yes, I just wonder how it helps this random piece of plastic roll when you're cheering it on. Yeah, well, can't hurt, right? <laughs> That's true. It can't hurt, unless there's a scientific study that shows it could hurt. I don't know, sonic ways affect the piece of plastic in flight. Who's to say? Butterfly effect? Personally, I, I would question the scientific credentials of the study, but that's just me. I think they all steal the butterfly effect from Ray Bradbury. Oh, really? Uh, a Sound of Thunder. It's a short story. I'm not spoiling it for you, but I'm just saying there's a sort of butterfly moment in it. Right, we're back yeah. here. Uh, we, we were successful, yes. So we gained... Okay, so binoculars not crushed. That's true. They are sturdy and they help us. You know what? It, it's a rickety set of drawers and we place the binoculars under the drawers so that we can level them off and search properly. That's what it is. Believe right, that. right. Okay, that makes, that makes sense. Believe All that right. if you will. I don't know. So we get a clue card, right? We do. We gain clue number four. A battery. A battery. All right. You find a battery in a drawer. It could power a flashlight or a taser or who knows what else? Keep this item. So we're adding that to our pile of gear. Okay. Right. And then we carry on with story card 19, which is where we were, weren't we? Uh, story card 19. I'm going to take your word for that. Well, I've got it sitting in front of me, and it says 19 on it. I, I completely and totally believe you. So after the challenge, we choose to climb the ladder to the hatch in the roof. Or we can crawl through the window and run for the front door of the house. Hmm. What do you think? Why would we go to the roof? Would we see something on the roof, perhaps hunting for the monster? And if we just run for the front door of the house, might we encounter the monster again? I say we should go up onto the roof, use the binoculars, see the monster, and then run the other way. Okay, sounds good. I don't know if any of that is even remotely possible. I say in, in our story, it totally is. So do you want to join me as yes. we're both? Um, well, since we're both, you know, in the same body here, uh, you know, that, that would be a bit awkward. Like, you know, like one leg going one direction, the other leg going the other direction, something like that. So yeah, I'll go along with you. Right. Of course, we could go on the, on the roof and fall off the, oh dear, that's fine. Now, I'm, I'm picturing it kind of like a three-legged race, but with only two legs. Now we're looking for story card number 27. You fall from the slippery roof and, oh, Oh, dear. We're dead? Now, let's get the actual card. <laughs> I would have believed that. You scramble up the ladder through the hatch and onto the guardhouse's decaying tile roof. Oh, no. It seems to be on the verge of collapsing. But you find oh, a spot no. that you're reasonably sure won't cave in when you put your weight on it. Across the dangerously unstable roof, from where you crouch uneasily, you can see a pile of construction materials probably left over by contractors working on the roof. Ooh, my psychic vision. Among the materials, a first aid kit, but navigating the length of the roof to reach it will be perilous. One wrong step and you could stumble off the roof into a ditch you see below. Near you is a thick vine that you could climb down to reach a courtyard, and not too far from you is a long board someone has laid between the roof and a nearby greenhouse, which seems to be sturdier than the guardhouse. We have an optional challenge get to the first aid kit. After that, uh, we carry on. Oh, no, we don't. No? What? If we choose the optional challenge, once we've done that, we go to story card 26. If we cross to the greenhouse, we're going to 29. And if we climb down the vine, we go to 14. So many choices. So the first aid kit is optional. Okay. It involves a foot, and we don't have any bonus items with a foot to help okay. Um, can I just, is there a maximum? Like, do we have, uh, do we have 
Can we only carry so many things in our inventory or is there no limit? There appears to be no limit. Okay, so did you want to do the optional challenge? Well, if we reach for this first aid kit and we fail and we fall down on our backsides, we'd need a first aid kit to heal ourselves. Hmm. Well, do we have a booster for this one or no? Uh, we have blue and green. We don't have this uh, dexterity base. We don't have one. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe not then. I don't know. Well, let's see. Uh, if we're rolling, a one or a two is a fail. Yeah. What do you think? Is your psychic sense telling you that we should just skip it this time? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Hmm. We could cross the plank to the greenhouse or climb down the vine. We're still not inside the house. Hmm. Maybe cross the plank. So you think the first aid kit is more of a distraction? Uh, it's up to you. Like, I mean, I feel like I've been making a lot of the choices, so I just want to, like, not hog that particular aspect of the game. But, I mean, if you want me to make up, if you want me to make a choice, it's no problem either. Well, what would you do in life? Would you cross a plank from one building? I would cross to the plank. I would cross the plank. You wouldn't trust the vine? Well, I think the vine, I might just run into the monster again. Hmm. Let's go to story card number. Ooh, where are we going? Crossing to the greenhouse. Looking for number 29 now. 29. There we are. So we just read that one, so we discard it. After crossing the precarious board, you find yourself at one end of a walkway that spans the length of the greenhouse roof. From here, you can see most of the mansion's vast grounds, which are a little out of place with the surrounding suburban neighborhood. The air is full of mosquitoes and other buzzing insects. The clouds you saw on the horizon earlier seem to be closer now. You see that there's an open access door in the roof that will allow you to descend into the greenhouse. You can also drop down onto a path which appears to lead to the side of the mansion itself. If you wriggle through the access door and enter the greenhouse, that's one option, or we can drop onto the path and run to the side of the house. Either way, we've got buzzy insects. 